It is another great day in the neighborhood. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, undecided and ready to have your first gender reveal party next year. This is not The Tonight Show, the Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Ellen, or the Trevor No Laugh Show. You're watching The Right Show. Each week, we come to you live from the studio. Basically, I break down the news in a way you're not supposed to talk about it, but it is incredibly funny and entertaining. And here's the best part. It's interactive. You can put your name in the comments. I'll throw it up on the screen like you're seeing here. You can say woo. You can say I'm a conspiracy theorist. You're going to get a shout out. So get those chats going. Click the like button because I'm banned on Facebook right now for 30 days. So I need all of you to help that Al Gore rhythm, if you know what I mean. Today's episode is going to be fantastic. Podcasters, if you're listening going, what's he talking about? This is not a video. It is a video. Look in the comments. Click that, and you just might be able to watch along with us because in the description, I usually put the link so you can enjoy it too. Today, we will discuss Biden getting dragged away by his fake doctor wife. We will discuss the president dancing like a freak on a leash. We're going to talk about Taylor classes that will put you in debt swiftly. And finally, the students are going to ask you for a bailout. This car crash all comes to you from the Biden administration. You're watching The Right Show, a support group for normal people. All right, welcome YouTubers, Facebookers, and podcasters. I have one question for everybody watching. Where are you from? And who do you think are the most woke universities in America? We're going to find out what you guys have to say. And I'm going to tell you in the banner going by, who they voted for, okay? So I read three articles and they all had different colleges. So I guess they're competing, like a running gun battle for the most woke. So these ones, these names kept coming up. American University in DC, the whole UC school system from Berkeley to Santa Cruz to UCLA and back. Yale University, Stanford University, Wellesley, Occidental, and I can uh, go ahead and Give Occidental credit for being incredibly woke and stupid. And then Stony Brook, which is in New York, Albany, New York, Northwestern, and then the list keeps going on. It's, it's really hard to know who is the most woke. So here's what I'm going to tell you, folks. If you go to a college like that, don't expect a lot in return. And then don't ask me to bail you out for your loans. Let's see if anyone else got it. Uh, I live in uh, Massachusetts. I think UCLA. UCLA was n labeled number one on one of the articles. Yep. UCLA, Harvard, and Princeton. It is time to get on with The Right Show. 347,000 subscribers. We've gone up 4,000 in the last three months. 202,000 Facebookers, even with all my bands. And I just finished two sold-out shows in none other than Salt Lake City, Utah. Unbelievable. Those people are fantastic. Thank you for supporting the show, getting your tickets. We had a great time. Wise Guys was amazing. We love it there. When I got back from Salt Lake City, I check my uh, direct messages on Twitter, which I rarely do. And would you believe I have a message from none other than Larry Elder? If you know who Larry Elder is, put it in the comments. He was a Republican candidate for the governorship of California. He should have won. Unbelievable. They put that idiot Gavin Greasy Newsom right back in. Anyway, he wrote me and I, I wanted to share this and I promised him I would. Kayvon, Uncle Tom 2 just came out. This new movie can be viewed on UncleTom.com. Now, you have to remember, Larry sent me the first one. So I watched this first one, and I loved it. What a great movie. There are so many fantastic people in it. You can see them all on the back. But dare I say they outdid themselves with Uncle Tom 2. It's way more current. It's way more relevant to what's happening right now, today. I don't care what it costs. I want you to go on UncleTom.com, buy the movie right now like I did, and watch this film. And I told Larry, I said, oh man, of course I will mention this on my podcast. And I love the first one. And I said, by the way, this comedy clip has over a million views on YouTube. What's in your backpack? But I said, I will mention your movie, Uncle Tom 2. Tell all my fans to go check it out. And here's my video. He loved my comedy clip. Very funny. I'm going to play your comedy clip on my TV show. That is how you do it, folks. So remember, when you're a conservative, you're going to be called a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe. They'll call you Stacy. That's not my name. 
that's not my name. There's a whole song about that. The point is you got Larry Elder on your side. You have these intellects who are not like, hey, you know, we they owe us money because of reparations, dog. You got to watch these very highly intelligent people explain how the left is using black people to turn them against America for the Marxist roots, helping communism enter. They know they cannot defeat America from the outside. The only thing they can do is push on the wedge from the inside. And sadly, they're cranking on African-Americans, supposed to be our fellow patriots, our good friends, and so many have been brainwashed by those Uncle Toms like Joe Biden. All right, upcoming tour dates. I hope you will all come check them out. Now let's pull up those tour dates so you can see what I'm talking about. As you can see, DC, six shows. Turning Point Las Vegas, pairing up with the big dogs. Syracuse, New York, San Diego, Turning Point Sacramento. Beverly Hills is a private event, but you can come to Jewett, Ohio, Nashville, Dry Bar taping in Provo, Utah, which is gonna be great. The first Dry Bar has 100 million views across all platforms. I think this one's gonna double it. Very fun material coming your way. Then Huntington Beach for my OC friends, and it all ends in Montana, and then I'm going to finally rest. Finally rest. All right, it is time to get on with the show. Let's start off with something fun. Let's have a little meme off. How about this one right here? The definition of insanity. This is that crazy leftist who was mad that Hillary Clinton lost. 2016, she looked like that. 2026, we're gonna get Trump now. 2036, starting to look like Elizabeth Warren. We got Trump this time. 2046, I'm gonna get you soon, my pretty. 2056, we're gonna get Trump. 2066, I know we're gonna get Trump. Next one. Speaking of angry, obnoxious women, none other than Rape and Ho. If you don't know Megan Rape and Ho, she is a pretend soccer player. She got really angry when the Arsenal under 15 boys beat the women's team five to one in a training match yesterday. Barstool football writes, holy speep. So look who's angry that the little kids beat the pro women. Next meme, doctor told this dude to cut out drinking. Look at him go, D-R-I-N-K-I-N-G. And finally, Biden voters, test your stupidity. Insert $100 here. Come on, man. Not a joke. All right, which was your favorite? Biden voter meme? Cut out drinking meme? Soccer players beating the women's pro team? Or finally, we're going to get you soon, Trump. Please put your favorite meme in the comments. We're going to find out who the winner is right now. Ha ha ha. Raggedy ho. Poor rapey ho. The boys also had better hair than Megan. She is wearing a wig like Andre Agassi. Ha ha ha, and ahoy mateys. All right, there you have it. It looks like Rape and Ho was the most laughed at meme of the week. <laughs> Folks, as you may or may not know, Joe Biden wants to make college as free as possible for people. And at the same time, very untimely announcement, there's a new college course where Taylor Swift lyrics are up for discussion. So imagine going to school and you wanna learn something, anything, and all they have to teach you that day are Taylor Swift lyrics. Swifties and students at the University of Texas at Austin will be able to take a college course that is solely dedicated to Taylor Swift lyrics. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? This is brought to you by the losers at Now This Media. They're a bunch of Democrats. And like I said, very untimely, at the same time they're asking for freebies from you, the taxpayer. They're offering ridiculous courses. If you don't believe me, watch. The UT students are headed back to the classroom for their second day today, and they still have a blank space in their schedule. They may want to rush to add this class. It probably has a wait list, I would imagine, but a UT professor is teaching a literary course, taking an extensive look at Taylor Swift's songbook. In a social media post, the English department said they want to take the Easter egg hunting and turn it into reading, into detail for academic purposes. I feel like they're trying to, we have Harry Styles at Texas State, gotta, gotta keep up, right? Gotta have all the fun. I was gonna say, those classes seem to be popping up at every school now. Yeah, mine was Elvis. We had the Elvis class, but... Oh, 
I'm going to love that. We had Liberace. <laughs> right? No, but I feel like there is always that random class where you're kind of like, I yeah. can't believe I'm getting credit for this. I don't understand why I'm not getting a great paying job where like I can have the corner office. I mean, I studied Taylor Swift. I learned all about Panda. Um, I did a whole week on P. Diddy. And now people don't find me useful. It's crazy. We need free college. You guys are so backwards. Let's go over some Taylor Swift lyrics so we can all save money on the college course, okay? Uh, good evening, class. Everyone get out. Uh, take your seats. We're going to go over some of Taylor Swift's most important lyrics. Now, remember, this weekend we're going to have a pop quiz on uh, ooh, look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, no cheating. Eyes on your own paper. Now, remember... We expect a thesis from each of you on the incredible lyrics of Taylor Swift, like, baby got bad blood, now we got problems, don't think we can solve them, you made a deep cut, and baby got bad blood, hey! Pop is bubblegum music, okay? It's not supposed to be looked at in depth. If this is what you're studying, you deserve to be homeless. At the same time, schools are offering ridiculous classes on horrible pop stars. Biden needs to give away $20,000 per student because, well, guess why? Uh, they can't afford these degrees, and then they come out and they have no job. Well, that's because baby got a bad degree, and you can't solve it. Hey! This guy is so stupid, and... The only person who can quite articulate his thoughts in the same way Joe Biden is thinking them is his diversity hire, Karine Jean-Pierre, the Raggedy Ann of the president. For that. And that, again, here's what we have done. Here's what, here's... a lot about how much it might cause, it might not cause. Who is paying for this? What we are saying is the, the work that this administration has done, the work that the Democrats in Congress has done, is actually there. And you see that the $1.7 trillion uh, deficit, in deficit uh, deduction that you see is, is going to benefit us in being able to do something for the middle class, to do something just... for the middle class. But when you this is about doing something for people who make less than $125,000, $1.7 trillion. That's what we've been able to do. But when you forgive debt, you're not just disappearing debt. So but, who is paying for but, this? And then I'll give you the second part. We lifted the pause, right? We're going to lift the pause uh, at the end of this year, which is going to matter, right? Which is going to offset uh, a lot of what, what we're doing as well. Uh huh. Uh huh. I was hired because of my sexuality and because of my skin color. Um, well, the debt will go away because we're lifting the pause, and the students will have to start paying their debt. So we're just going to give away the debt and make the taxpayer. This is why inflation is going out of control. This is why schools are going to keep charging more and more because it's subsidized by the taxpayer. So who is paying for college and Taylor Swift classes while well, they're supposed to be learning math, science, engineering? You. And me. And there's no class for that. Now, don't expect Joe Biden to have any explanation for any of this. He has no clue what's going on. Joe Biden has to be moved around like Weekend at Bernie's by anyone he can trust. The Easter Bunny, his wife. One time he had a blind guy lead him to where he was supposed to stand. I'm not kidding. Watch this. Try not to cringe. Here we go. I'm answering reporters' questions. Hey, good morning, Ashley. I love this. Joe Biden decides to go walk about and answer questions from reporters. The eagle has left the nest. I will. I, look, if the doctors listen to the science, if the scientists say that, I'm sorry, if the scientists say that it's safe, and the Pete, take a listen to this. So this is the leader 
of our nation. As you can tell, the Democrats don't care who's leading. They're just casting for a TV show. We need a black person for this role. We've never had uh, someone in a wheelchair doing this. Let's just do that. The president, he could be anybody as long as he just smiles and goes, come on, man, not a joke. They're not really uh, doing anything. Well, if this was running efficiently, they would have a real job to do. But as you can see, Jill Biden pulls him back every time he starts to wander off or go the wrong place. He's the leader, or is she? Watch again. Mm -mm. I think she is the most well-paid home health care nurse in the world, and the White House is by far the most expensive elderly caregiver home in the world as well. Very sad. Moving right along. Joe Biden claims that the police need to rein it in. Anytime a black person, Latino, person of color, color, as they say, gets shot or arrested, Joe Biden is very quick to say they did it wrong. He knows nothing about what happened. He has not seen all the camera angles. He does not know the full situation. But Joe Biden, he learned it from Barack Obama. He acted stupidly. That's not how I would have done it. I would have shot him in the leg. You know, you could just wing him. You could shoot him in the arm and then have a nice talking to. This is how they think the police need to act unless the police attack a political opponent. Watch Joe Biden say that you should, the police act stupid. They need to, there's other ways of dealing with this. But when it comes to January 6th, this was the only solution. They're not saying her name. They're not chanting. They're not saying, why did the police do this? They're not bringing them up for an investigation. There's no trial. Had this been a black person, it would be totally different because in America, the Democrats only see things through one lens, racially, as long as it helps them. Don't believe me? Take a look. If a white police officer did this to a person of color, the whole country would be on fire right now. Go. We can do this. You can ban chokeholds. You can, but, you, but beyond that, you have to teach people how to de-escalate circumstances. De-escalate. So instead of anybody coming at you and the first thing you do is shoot to kill, you shoot them in the leg. There's ways. Do you want to tell us who you are? Uh, my name is Michael Byrd. I'm a lieutenant for the United States Capitol Police. For months, he has lived in hiding, he says, over this moment. So instead of anybody coming at you and the first thing you do is shoot to kill, you shoot him in the leg. His decision to use deadly force against a rioter as she climbed through a barricaded door that leads to the House chamber. What are you hearing on your radio? I'm hearing about the breaches of different uh, barricaded areas, uh, officers being overrun officers being down. Did you ever hear a call or a report of shots fired during any of this? As a matter of fact, I did. There was reports of shots fired through the house main door onto the floor of the chamber. Later, those reports would prove to be false. We had our weapons drawn. There's a gun! There's a gun! Bird, only his hand and gun visible, targeted a figure trying to climb through a window. He fired a single fatal shot hitting Ashley Babbitt. She was 35 years old, an Air Force veteran, Trump supporter, and QAnon follower. We see your arm out there for a considerable amount of time. Were you wavering? I was taking a tactical stance. You're ultimately hoping that your commands will be complied with. And unfortunately, they were not. When you fired, what could you see? Where were you aiming? You're taught to aim for center mass. Uh, the subject was sideways, and I could not see her full motion of her hands or anything. Um, so I guess her movement, you know, caused the uh, discharge to, to fall where it did. And what did you think this individual was doing at that, at that moment? She was posing a threat to United States House of Representatives. But an attorney for Ashley Babbitt's family disputes that. He did not respond to our request for a comment, but in a previous statement said Babbitt was not brandishing a weapon, not in close proximity to members of Congress, and was not an imminent threat of death or serious injury to anyone. We can do this. You can ban chokeholds. You can, but, you, but beyond that, you have to Teach people how to de-escalate circumstances. De-escalate. So instead of anybody coming at you and the first thing you do is shoot to kill, you shoot him in the leg. So we expose the liar bird. Now, because he's black, he was able to just kind of sneak up to the side of the window 
and you can hear no verbal commands. Stop. I have the ability to shoot you. Don't make me do this. Stand down. He's kind of sneaking up in the corner, being nice and quiet. Pow. Got his freebie. Now he's talking about, well, the media, you know, I heard there were gunshots outside. Yeah, the media, CNN said that. It later turned out to be false because CNN was trying to get click, click, click. And because of that, he's hearing this, but he went and got his freebie in. This was his chance to get a little freebie because, look, he knew he could get away with this. Now, if a woman's crawling through a window, both of her hands are open. A cop doesn't have the right to just shoot. If a white cop shot a black person just for coming in a window, Washington, D.C. would be on fire still to this day. Seattle would be burning. Portland would have bomb threats every single day. The streets would be taken over. Uh, Los Angeles, every shoe store would be robbed. When you go to New York City, they would put Ashley's life mattered all over the walls and on the streets. Even Joe Biden, clarity. You don't have to kill everybody. There's ways to de-escalate. But when it comes to this one person who was crawling in a window, 130 pound woman, she needed to be killed right then and there because she was a political opponent to Joe Biden. Let's check up in the comments. Uh, Brandy agrees with me. I live in Oregon, Brandy says, and we are very bad here. Rome agrees. A lot of people still think Kyle Rittenhouse shot black people. In fact, Kyle Rittenhouse only defended himself against white and one black guy jumped up and kicked him in the face. He didn't even shoot that person, and he just waited for the white. Kyle Rittenhouse, in that moment, knew, wait for the white people. You'll be okay. Now, since Officer Bird is black, he will get away with it. If you go on the street, man on the street, and you ask 100 people that hate the police, name an unarmed white woman shot by police. None of them. Out of 100, zero of them can say the name Ashley Babbitt. Let me know if you agree. And uh, yes, we are live right now, Brandy. As I said, if you leave a comment and it looks funny, I will put it on the comment. And Brandy writes, oh my God, I am a huge fan. I can't believe you're live. <laughs> we are. And now, Brandy, you are the star of today's show. He's supposed to be a tamed officer. It shouldn't matter what was said on the news or radio. He has to make the call on the spot. He definitely had his freebie. So sad he should go to jail. All right. Well, this is not the purpose of the right show, just to dig into this the whole time. But we do have to talk about it because there's so much misinformation. So who causes all this misinformation? None other than Joe Biden. Would you agree Joe Biden's whole presidency has been a car crash? In fact, I found a car crash that represents Joe Biden's presidency. Tell me if you agree. Take a look. There we go. The first time I ever saw a full car crash that actually represented Joe Biden, a multiple car pileup that keeps getting worse and worse the longer it goes on. I pray for the United States. I pray for you and me. We have, what, two more years of this? Can you believe Joe Biden's only been in office a year and seven months? I mean, it feels like an eternity. Go get a drink. We'll be right back. Novak Djokovic, a Serbian has been denied entry to the United States because of Joe Biden's administration. You see, Joe Biden believes if you are an immigrant and you don't get multiple vaccinations, you should not be allowed in our beautiful country unless you're a Mexican, Guatemalan, or Honduran that sneaks across the southern border, then come on in by all means. But if you're trying to come here as a healthy, fit, number one ranked tennis player in the world, Novak Djokovic, you're not welcome here for political reasons. Now, when I heard that Australia did this to Novak, I criticized them. And I want my international fans to know that we are on your side. We want you to come to our country if you're healthy and fit and you're just gonna come here and womp on the tennis players and go home. Novak, you belong in the United States, but because of the radical left, you're not welcome here. So join me in saying conservatives and moderates love Novak Djokovic. 
We love competitive sports. We love professionals. We love our athletes and we love immigrant athletes, but we don't like the radical left who is scared of all of you. Let's take a look. Unvaccinated Djokovic can't come to the US Open. That is not a moderate or conservative point of view. That is a radical far left point of view. Unvaccinated Novik withdraws from the US Open as he can't travel to the United States. Now imagine being the best player in the world, knowing you can win the US Open. You're on track to have the most wins of all, but because of his own personal beliefs and his own health, he's opting out. He might not be known as the best player of all time, simply because he's not allowed to compete in four or five key tournaments. He's right there on the cusp of having all the accolades he deserves. Let's read this. Novak Djokovic, I'll read it like a Serbian. The 21-time major champion and former world number one has withdrawn from U.S. Open due to travel restrictions into the United States as a result of being unvaccinated against COVID-19. Djokovic made the announcement Thursday morning shortly before the withdrawal, revealed in a tweet, sadly, I will not be able to travel to New York this time for Open. He wished luck to fellow players, meaning he says, screw you, but I have to be nice about it. And he said he would keep in good shape and positive spirit, and he will wait to kick their ass at the next tournament. Novak Djokovic, we salute you. Now, why are they making Novak Djokovic get vaccines to come to the United States? Are you djokovic me? Biden administration, you have no right to tell him he has to get a vaccine because Joe and Jill Biden have been responsible for five COVID outbreaks in the last month alone with all their boosty boosts. They're still the most sick people in the world. I say test Novak, see if he has the virus. If he doesn't, let him come in and beat the heck out of the Australian, the American, the French, and the British players and go back with one of our trophies. If you agree, put it in the chats. Yes. If you have a question of who's ruining the United States, look at the comments. Tell me, do you think Djokovic should be allowed in the United States or do you think he should not be allowed? Let me remind you, most of my fans are moderate to conservative and not radical left. So who thinks Djokovic should be allowed to compete in the United States? Me, I'm one. Come on in here, win and get your money. I like excellence. Who else thinks Djokovic? should be allowed in. Here we have Amira Isan. Djokovic, come on in. Angelica, come on in. Millennium Man 76, come on. So people of the world, if you want to know who's ruining your country and ours, remember, it is the radical left. We'll be back with a whole lot more on The Right Show. Now you want to talk about a tennis player who does not have what it takes anymore. It's not Novak Djokovic. He is still winning number one, top of his game. But there's always those female athletes that want to get the news and the media is far left. So they're going to give them more press than they deserve. We talk about none other than Serena Williams. Serena Williams decides to quit. Okay. And she blames it on her daughter. That's the worst part about all of this. When Serena Williams started, she was a happy, smiley tennis player. She had her whole future ahead of her. She was fantastic. And America, as soon as she came on the scene, was like, whoa, this is pretty cool. Venus and Serena. Now, some people didn't like it, but as a whole, our country, Nike, sponsorships, TV, the press was favorable. Everybody liked her. It's just the haters that don't like her. But guess what? The haters have never liked anybody. That's why they're haters. Look how she entered, smiley and happy, ready to win. Then, five, ten years later, smiley, happy, ready to win. But now she's 41 years old. She's taken the blue pill one too many times. She's turned into the LeBron James of tennis players. In fact, it might be LeBron James in a tutu. I've never seen Sabrina and LeBron at the same place at the same time. Now, here's the problem. She's been losing publicly. You watch her lose, she melts down. She's not used to this. But hey, 41-year-old women lose tennis matches to the next hot thing. You see her get on the court and throw her racket. You see her make faces at the judges. You see her screaming, crying, yelling, pouting. This was not the original Serena Williams. Now, luckily, the person that keeps beating her is named Naomi Osaka. She has a world of problems on her own, but thank God, everyone must thank God every day that Naomi is black and a woman. Because if a white little Russian or a little Swede beat her in a little tennis outfit. First of all, they would burn down Seattle, Portland, Los Angeles, and New York would have to spray paint murals of her name and her face all over because she'd be talking about race and gender 
and white women. But luckily, Naomi Osaka, thank you for being half black. Every day we thank you. <laughs> Naomi Osaka keeps beating her and she's screaming and crying and yelling. So finally, finally, Serena has decided to quit. Now, instead of just quitting and saying, hey, my best years are behind me, I'm 41, I've had the best career of all time, I am a fantastic tennis player, and thank you to all my fans. She can't do it. She has to blame her daughter for why she's quitting. It is really something else. And I'm going to read to you exactly what she says when she quits. Serena Williams says farewell to tennis on her own terms. Vogue magazine. There she is, looking fine and fabulous, and there's her little daughter playing with her dress. This morning, my daughter Olympia turned five this month. We were on our way to get her new passport for a trip to Europe, and she said, I want to be a big sister. I never wanted to have to choose between tennis and a family. I don't think it's fair. If I were a guy, I wouldn't be writing this because I'd be out there playing and winning while my wife was doing all the physical labor and expanding our family. Maybe I'd be like a Tom Brady, throwing Tom Brady under the bus, if I had the opportunity. Don't get me wrong, I love being a woman, and I love every second of being pregnant with Olympia. I was one of those annoying women who adore being pregnant, and I was working until the day I had to report to the hospital. I never liked the word retirement. It doesn't feel like a modern word to me. I've been thinking of this as a transition, but I want to be sensitive to how I use the word. I want to grow that family that I started. Okay, so there it is. So in one sentence, instead of just saying, hey, my best years are behind me. I had a great run. Thank you, America. I love this country. You guys supported me when no one would. Thank you, Nike. Thank you to all the uh, advertisements and the multi-million contract only in America. Not a lot of uh, people in Sudan, Chad, Yemen are doing well in black female sports. She blamed Tom Brady, men, sexism, her family, and her daughter for why she is quitting tennis for good. Let's see what you guys think. Oh, her poor husband. Kayvon's tone was hilarious. Sounded like Eminem. The bottom line is she stopped winning. All right, now for a little bit of a lighthearted news story, this is actually kind of fun. A nightclub in New York City has banned staring at women. That's right. A nightclub says no staring without consent. Now, the whole point of going to a nightclub is to just look at people, listen to horrible music, and scream as loud as you can for a Red Bull and vodka, please. You can have just as much fun at home. You can buy a vodka this big. For $34 from Costco, you can get a six-pack of Red Bull for $9.99. You can combine it, or you go to the nightclub, and you can pay $3,500 for that honor. But a nightclub is banning, staring without verbal consent. This means that is discrimination on Italian and Persian men. Because Italian and Persian men, all we do is stare. Hey, I was looking at you from over there. You want to dance with me and get a little drink of some? Or Persians. Hello, how are you? I noticed you through the fog machine. Every time he went bap, bap, bap and hit the fog, I said, I've been going to go say hi to her, so here I come. This is wrong. You can't say no staring. And it begs the question, are you going to be allowed to buy a woman a drink without written consent? I need you to sign here and here so I can buy you Red Bull Vodka. Come on, put your signature here. I need your John Hancock, right? And what's next? No grinding on her perfectly formed booty without two forms of ID and a notarized signature. One, I want to go from the window to the wall. I like her big butt and I cannot lie. So please, I need two forms of ID. <laughs> All right, please put in the comments what else you think would be hilarious if you had to get consent and or a written statement in order to do in the club. That's what I want to know. Speaking of dropping it like it's hot, Finland's prime minister, which is like their president of a very small country with no diversity, decided to go wild, dancing, freaking, dropping it like it's hot. She's like 36 years old. She's the youngest prime minister of all time. The video got out and now she's saying, well, it's not illegal. Listen, when you're the president of the country, I want you to be a dweeb. I want you to be a dork. I want you to have glasses. I want you to spend your nights thinking, how can we increase the economy, lower the unemployment, help the homeless, and create more jobs? You've never seen a prime minister quite like this. And I added some cheesy porn music to match her style of dancing. Take a look.
<laughs> okay, so that's controversial. But look, okay, people are like, oh, so she can't party because she's in government? My whole point of when you're in government, all your partying days should be behind you. You should be focusing on stupid, boring stuff. The economy, the GDP, um, unemployment, immigration status, uh, the diversity of the country, uh, how much corn is being produced, okay? I think everyone should party in their 20s and 30s, and that's why you should not be president in your 30s. Would you want to go up to your banker in charge of your retirement and you're very concerned because you want to be able to retire. You've got two kids, you got college on the way, and you're like, can we please go over the numbers and how much I need to put in each year in order to hit our financial goals? And he's got two glow sticks. And he's like, yeah, for sure, dude. But um, can we do it like next week? I'm going to Burning Man and I just dropped some acid. Oh, what, I can't party? I'm taking this week off, okay? So after this week, we'll go over your numbers, okay? Okay, you're close-minded because we party. All right, everyone parties. All right, so take your little like worries and I'll figure it out after I take these shrooms, okay? I love mushies. Everybody loves mushies, dude. Would you still take your money to this man or would you look for a dweeb, a Dilbert, a nerd who tucks his shirt in, he's got a tie and he's like, yeah, I spent, uh, I actually spent the last four weeks uh, my free time going over the, uh, the different currencies and how I think that might affect what's going on in the United States. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so each week I've been doing reels, TikToks, and YouTube shorts. Now, a YouTube short is a TikTok. A reel is just Facebook and Instagram's version of a TikTok. This week was no different. I want you to see this week's TikTok. It's going viral. We're gonna end the show on a big laugh. We deserve it. So please, allow me to show you a funny clip no more than 39 seconds long from one of my old comedy specials that when you slice it into TikTok form, it already has 15,000 views in less than five hours. Those flight attendants are grouchy. Be on the plane, I was delayed an hour. Just sitting there, delayed an hour on the tarmac. I pulled out my phone, started texting. She comes over pretending to be nice, but not really. <laughs> Women are good at that. Hi. <laughs> Hi, is that in airplane mode, sir? That really, that needs to be in airplane mode. I'm like, why don't you put the plane in airplane mode? That's what needs to happen. <laughs> I have Sprint. This is not keeping us on the ground right now. I promise you. Look at the people with Sprint. They know what I'm talking about. We lost signal when we left the store. Haven't got it back since, okay? It's a never-ending journey. Where does this thing work? Where does it work? <laughs> it doesn't work anywhere. That concludes today's episode. Folks, I think you guys were amazing in the chats, and you guys were funnier in the chats today than I was, and that's okay with me. Because if I'm struggling, working my way through the show, I need you guys to pick up the slack. That's why we're all here. This is not just a podcast. This is a support group for normal people. Now, if today's show entertained you in any way, here's what I want you to do. For one, go on caveoncomedy.locals.com. Let me know in the chats over there. Come hang with us. We always, after this show, hang there for about five minutes, and we break down what was going on, and I'll tell a few secrets you can't tell on YouTube. That's right over there. If you want to leave a little tip in the bucket, you can do that on Super Chats right here on YouTube. Or if you don't want to use your Super Chats, go on GoFundMe.com slash Comedy. Or what you can do is go on, check this out, Venmo at KVON dash KVON or Cash App dollar sign Kayvon Comedy. Share my comedy clips. And finally, give this podcast a five-star review on Apple Podcast. I have not gotten one in the last two, three weeks. What's going on? I'm out here making jokes posting comedy clips, making fun of Joe Biden. What does a half Persian got to do around here? I feel like Serena Williams. I will not let you disrespect me. You need to leave me five stars. You heard me.